Well, hello there, friends. So today we are talking about the most common upholstery tools that we're going to be using probably on a daily basis if you're going to do this as a business or as a hobby. Totally up to you. So, of course, we have these things here featured. First, of course, is going to be a sewing machine, right? Ah, okay. Then we're talking about stuff for spraying glue, screwing screws, stapling staples, cutting fabric, putting, uh, installing snaps, installing pop rivets, and for measuring. So I need to tell you that this really is all you need. I might be missing one or two items that I didn't go get, but really this is it. Um, I had one guy comment to me, he said that he's got a big giant toolbox full of tools that he's collected over the years. And you know what, I have a pretty big toolbox myself, but you know what, I never go to it unless if I need a wrench or something to fix my car. Um, this is all I need. Uh, this is, like I'm saying, it's the most basic. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm, yep, 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 mm-hmm. I always get hundreds of questions about the sewing machine. So what kind of sewing machine do I have? So I retired my Adler, my Chandler Adler. It's a German-made sewing machine. Ran like a German watch. It was so quiet and smooth. Couldn't believe it. It was pure luxury. But you know what? After 38 years, I wore it out. So I had to go shopping for a new sewing machine. So I got the best thing that I thought I could find at the time. Uh, something that I was hoping that would last me at least another 10 years uh, before I give this up. What I'm using here is this Juki. And it is a model LU2810. And you can see what it does have is it has this huge arm right here. Um, the other arm that I had probably ended about right here. So it only gave me this much room here to wrap material underneath. But look at that. I got lots of room. And the other nice thing I like about this machine is look at the height on that foot. I can get a lot of material underneath that foot right there. Sometimes people are asking me, well, what kind of machine should I get? Oh, you know, maybe I'm just starting out or I'm a beginner, that kind of thing. Well, you don't have to go out and shop and, and spending so much money on a brand new machine because it can get really expensive. So all you really need is an, a sewing machine, an industrial sewing machine, okay? Not a home style for doing upholstery. Okay, what you want is you want something that ha has a walking foot. So the walking foot, let me demonstrate the walking foot for you real fast. So the walking foot does just that. What it does is it, it walks. Look at that. It advances the material through the sewing machine. So that's very helpful. So walking foot and then reverse. So this is my reverse lever, lever right here. This will put it in reverse. You can sew in reverse. Okay, and then the other last thing I think that is really important is this welt foot right here. See how it's got that little round cutout right there? So what that does is that helps when you're sewing welt. Okay, so once you have those three items, that's all you really need. And you know what? You could pick up a used sewing machine with those same features for uh, one-fifth of the price of a brand new sewing machine. Under the sewing machine, you have a knee lift right here. So that's what you move with your knee. And what it's doing is it's lifting up that foot right there. That's very handy. If you don't have the knee lift, Almost every machine I think I've ever seen has some kind of a lever that you pull on that also works that foot lift right there. As far as sewing machine maintenance goes, 
you'll want to have some sewing machine oil. So a lot of the older machines have little ports that you would stick the oil in and you squeeze it and all the moving parts. But you know what? This is a, what they're doing these days. Is um, Everything is got these little oil tubes everywhere. So this is an oil tank. So I guess it's pretty much uh, maintenance free. So other than that, I just keep my machine wiped down. Wipe it down, keep it clean. And keep a well-oiled machine. I just saw that I need to add oil to my machine. On some of the older machines, you're going to see little ports like this, these little holes. And I don't know about this machine, but I know the older machines that they want you to put the oil down the holes. So also I've seen that on top of the machine like this. Like if you have a, a port here, maybe you need to put some oil. So don't forget those. The next most popular question I get all of the time is about glue. So I only use one glue for everything. It's contact adhesive. There might be different brand names, but it should always be contact adhesive. Okay, this brand name here, you know, of course I'm not sponsored, so anyway. Um, contact adhesive for everything. Don't waste your money on buying a can of this, a can of that, from this type of glue for this, this, this type of glue for that. You're going to spend a lot of money on glue when you only need one. Okay, and this is going to be the most reliable. It's ne never going to fail on you. I've been using this stuff for 43 years. Okay, the other question I always get is about the gun. So you can see um, here that I use this, this gun all the time. And people ask me if the glue ever gets hard inside the gun. So I'm working in an air-conditioned space. So it doesn't get real hot in here, but I have been in places where it's been really hot and probably after a couple weeks, the glue will get stiff in there and it could dry at the bottom of the cup. But for the most part, it's going to be exactly like that. It's going to be the liquid. The other reason why I never clean this cup here, I never clean the gun. The only thing I ever clean is going to be this tip right here one of the characteristics of contact adhesive is when you put the new contact adhesive over the old contact adhesive it reactivates so it, it becomes sticky again so that's a really nice thing about contact cement so as far as maintenance on the gun it's really maintenance free except for the tip sorry to bore you guys with all this but if you've heard it before but I get a hundred questions all the time. What do I clean the glue off with? Well, there we go. The mineral spirits. Everybody thinks I'm mineral spirits crazy, right? Because I'm always talking about it all the time. So just understand that uh, for the people that are watching the videos all the time, they've heard it a hundred times already. But there's still a lot of people that are watching these videos for the first time. So we're going to take the mineral spirits and we're going to clean off the tip. Anyway, put that on, let it sit for about five minutes and all that glue will just come right off. People ask me if I use one of these kind of guns and I do not. Not for glue. Anyway. Mostly because it's not very convenient. You can't lay it down on a table if it's full of glue. Right? Oh, you see what I'm saying? For this one, you want to set it down because you're setting it down all the time. So you set it where? Right there on the table. Now let's move on to some of the other items. Okay, screw gun or electric drill or cordless drill or battery powered drill. Everybody's got their name for it. They always correct me when I call it something wrong. 
Anyway, we use that an awful lot, don't we? So, next is a hammer. Sometimes we use, this is a tack hammer. You can see that it's well used. Anyway, I've had this for a number of years. Anyway, hammer. Okay, next is staple gun. Cheap Harbor Freight. Okay. So then what we have here are regular staples. This is for something that's not going to be exposed to water. So for boats, jet skis, motorcycle seats, we're going to use stainless steel. That way we don't have a problem with rusting staples. For maintenance, we just got to make sure that it's oiled every now and then. Just like any other pneumatic power tool. How about scissors for cutting materials, right? So what I have here is, this here is for heavy materials. I've had these for, prob I've had these for probably 30 years. And you know what, sometimes even these get full of glue because I'm cutting materials that I had glued. So what do we use for that? And let's say it together. I know what you're going to say. Mineral spirits, right? You were going to say mineral spirits, right? So anyway, we'll clean that off. Next. This is one that I keep by my sewing machine to trim off the threads. Anyway, it's nice. They're nice and lightweight. And they do a real nice job of cutting threads. This is the one that I use for cutting materials, like vinyl and fabrics and foam. So this is a snap tool. Okay, this is what I use for putting on snaps. These ones right here. Anyway, that pops into there. Like that. That's a brand new... These are called a tire. It's a rubber, rubber um, thing that you put on there that holds it in. Anyway, I just replaced those. They look like this. So that's the maintenance on this one. The old one that I had on there was dried and brittle, and it wouldn't hold the snap like that. So the snap would fall out all the time. And that was really annoying. So that's the snap tool. I used to pay $40 for these things, believe it or not. Now they're like 260 bucks. I think I saw on Amazon. This is a pop rivet tool. So, for those of you that are experienced, you know that you put the pop rivet into the pop rivet tool. Just like that. Use that a lot. Sometimes in an emergency, we gotta use super glue. This works really good on vinyl. Now we have a special appearance. Today's guest is Lucille. The box cutter she came back turns out that I left her in one of my cars and she's been missing for like six months I thought she died so we had replaced her with Jeffrey so this is Jeffrey the box cutter tool we'll keep him but if you've seen in some of my other videos what I do is I rough up the blade I take a grinder and I grind up the edge of the blade here so what that does is that catches the threads when I'm taking patterns apart. If I'm taking a seat apart or something like that, it just rips those threads. And it doesn't damage the material. I also have a video of cutting foam with a hacksaw blade. So you go check out that video. This is for foam. Cutting foam. Not fingers. Other things that I use, in the old days we used to call this a scratch-all. I don't know what the young guys call it now. Okay, and then we have the white china marker. Use that a lot. Okay, I'm showing you yellow chalk. I never use yellow chalk, but I'm showing it to you just to show you what the chalk. I always use white. Never use the yellow. The yellow is always sitting there unused. I use a black sharpie a lot to mark materials. 
and a staple puller. Mm -hmm. You can see all my all of my tools here are well used. On occasion, you have to mask up something with masking tape. We have measuring devices. I have a 40 inch yardstick here. Does that make any sense? It really is 40, in, 40 inches. Anyway, I use this here for measuring, precision measuring. So I measure off things like pleats and the width of panels and all as I'm making my patterns. That's what I use this one for. For drawing long lines, I have this really long straight edge right here. 60 inches. I used to have a two yard yardstick that was 72 inches. But I, I don't know what happened to that years ago. Anyway, this is 60 inches for marking straight lines. And I have this square right here. So when I'm marking materials, I always want to make sure that everything is nice and square. I'm not going to eyeball it and we're not going to guess. Right? So we're going to make everything square before we start making uh, like patterns or pleats or that kind of stuff. We want to make sure everything looks good. We're not going to eyeball it. And we have the sewing table. So the sewing table, I have it built around my sewing machine. So you're going to see right here is the tail end of it. This is what holds the material before it gets sewn. I have the little cutout right there so that way I can position my body so I can look straight on on the mat on the needle right there as I'm sewing. Okay, over here I have my little bucket which holds all my most commonly used items. There's the hacksaw blades, right? Okay, so the table here is a 60 inch width because most fabrics and vinyls come with a 54 inch width. So I'm able to roll out the fabric and not have it flop over the edge of the table. That's why I made it 60 inches. Sometimes we need a place for our materials. So I just roll up my rolled up materials and I store them underneath the table. Here we have threads. So the most common colors I try to keep. So I have the regular size sewing threads right there. I guess it's probably like a, what do you see there, 92? Size 92. Or if you want to do a heavy top stitch, I use this heavier thread like this. And that's what that is. And then you have your bobbins. This machine here takes M bobbins. There's different size bobbins. I had a bunch of G, G size bobbins from my old machine that I'm just using up. But the big giant bobbins are really nice because you're not changing them out as often. And here we have sewing needles. So if you're really dangerous and you're replacing needles all the time, this is the way to go. Cheaper by the mega dozen. And sometimes we need paper towels for cleaning. So anyway, like I was saying, ah!